Okay. All right. Hey, everybody. Uh, how's it going? Welcome to this week's class, a crypto mastery class. I'm uh, back in the saddle, back in the office here in Washington, D.C. And uh, we're just getting everything set up here because we're recording on multiple machines uh, for various purposes. So uh, welcome here and um, welcome to all of our uh, clients here. And I see some familiar names. Let me see. I saw Rick was here. How you doing, Rick? Rick's joining. And let's see, Cornelia. Francisco, Mary, uh, Mark, Nathan, how's it going? Perry, Ray, Rick, Stan, Todd, Dr. T, Paul J. Everyone's showing up today uh, because it's a big day in the markets and um, things are playing out for just as we forecasted it. So uh, that's good news. Um, I do think it's going to be a volatile week. So I would exercise caution. Uh, we're going to unpack some news here. And if you are new here and you want to join these classes live or if you're watching the recording, you can learn more about uh, all that over at uh, moonstream.io and you can sign up for free classes and things down below like our monday newsletter which is excellent um, irene does a great job pushing that out and of course sign up for today's class on tuesdays right here uh, we have an updated we will soon have an updated trader success checklist it seems i had buggered the code on that when i was updating the images so i, I think myrene's still working on that and we're going to have that ready soon and then there's some other three things down below. You can also find out more about what we do over here in terms of our services, et cetera. So we'll talk about uh, maybe some of that later. But most importantly, let's get to the markets and um, just the TLDR on all of this as, hey, look at that, uh, was right. I love it when things go my way. You never really know. And let's see something on poly market to have betting delayed unless... That's interesting. Um, but uh, on this topic here, you know, I drew this uh, this setup here weeks ago and um, and uh, somewhere in this range. And I've only I've only modified it slightly timing wise. We haven't uh, we had it. I had it down in this range to hold at the 21 day exponential moving average. And sure enough, it did bounce right off of there. We are getting our ERI as well. So I do want to make these classes quicker. Everyone's busy, but um, you know, the news is probably not the most important thing on everyone's mind. So um, you tell me in the comments, would you rather lead with sort of charts, quick sort of overview, then news, and then kind of dive into some alts and things? Of course, we do a much deeper dive on all this in our M3 Active Trader class tomorrow, where I give coin recommendations. We're going to have some good ones tomorrow. And our Thursday class, uh, if I put on my other hat, <clears throat> As our retire rich inner circle, that's for our longer term coins. And uh, you do get a hat, by the way, when you sign up for that. So uh, that's for finding the next Netflix and Amazons of the future. I've got some uh, nice ones lining up for uh, doing just that. So, um, but most importantly here, we have our indicators. Today's class is really to teach you how to use these indicators better and um, give you kind of overall feel of things. But look at this big bullish engulfing candle today. Uh, likely there's a couple things happening. Of course, the elections today, it's a, a cycle low that we've been forecasting from a market cycle, um, uh, market cycle standpoint, but also uh, that pension fund in England just announced they were going to start investing in Bitcoin. Yeah, dramatic pause there because pension funds getting into this is going to be huge. And uh, so, you know, the dominoes continue to fall here. I wonder if that's something, you know, we may need to add that to our path to $150,000 Bitcoin as one of the ways that we could uh, get there. Of course, those 10 factors have been following since last year. But just focusing on this, we have an ERI. Look at that. The radar is all green, you guys. Um, just overnight, this is, these were all red just days ago. That's a dramatic uh, switch up. And of course, Bitcoin bouncing 2,500 points today. Um, you know, this does not mean that, you know, certainly I would caution everybody from running out and buying everything. Okay. And here's why. We know, uh, we know that the, the end of the day uh, close is the most important. So while we do have bullish signals, we have our RSI Pro turning green. I'll turn off the ones I don't want you to look at yet. We have, though, we have the ERI, the early reversal indicator, this green arrow, which we last saw down here. And when the TSI went from red to green, uh, by the way, I'm working with Joe on uh, the programmer on being able to set these alerts and making that a little bit more clear. We're continuing to refine these. And uh, and if you are new here and you'd like to learn more about our indicators, uh, you can hop over to uh, cryptomastery.org 
slash pro or from our main website. And there's a 30 minute video here. Just watch that because now is the time you need these signals. And it talks about uh, all of these signals that we're going to be talking about today. Today is predominantly a crypto mastery uh, training uh, because it's a free class and kind of exposure to some of our other services. So, and hopefully just to help everybody out. And so uh, certainly right now is a good time to be looking very, very closely at these markets. And, and I, I would say to you, uh, don't sit around on your hands too long. If this thing's going to go and the the right people I, I'm following and watching, listening to, and gauging by my own barometers and ultimately rely on my own uh, TA, uh, but it's good to know what else is out there. Um, and specifically, though, <laughs> being a contrarian, if everybody's saying we're going on the four-year cycle, 2025 is going to be it, which most people are, that's when I'm a little hesitant. But uh, the people I like and trust and what my own kind of spidey sense tells me, if this is going to go, you know, if we have not already put on an all-time high, I don't think we have, but it's going to run pretty fast, pretty quick, and then and then it could be over. <clears throat> okay. Uh, and and so that remains to be seen. Not over forever, um, but uh, certainly a, a point to be taking some profits and not coming back and saying to me, Brett, uh, it's New Year's Day, January 1. I'm ready to do this. What do I do? Uh, and I might be saying, you missed it. So we want to uh, be very careful on and watch the next week or so. I believe we'll go higher from here. The election, certainly there will be some uncertainty. And... Um, but it'll sort out typically with elections, you know, that first week afterward, there's a lot of volatility, but things kind of settle out. And by the 10th day after the election, uh, traditionally, historically, things go up. Uh, because why? Because there's certainty. And I've talked a lot about certainty in the chat, in the M3 Active Trader chat. And so, you know, and the all, the analogy from the show Billions, you know, when the his traders, when the head of uh, Axe Capital, Bobby Axelrod, has inside information from one of his traders, he says, are you certain? And if they say, I'm not uncertain, that means they have inside information. Now, we don't have inside information, but the point is, if you were certain of an outcome, you would bet much heavier. And at least we have more certainty, and by the end of today, we'll have more certainty than the last week. This sell-off here is basically de-risking positions and uh, because of the uncertainty of what could happen. Anything could happen this week and uh, in going into this election. But, but right now, and the latest polls and poll watchers and people that got it right last time, I was watching a guy on, uh, you know, granted on YouTube, but I think you're going to find a lot more, um, a less, uh, a lot <laughs> more or less, you're going to find less biased news, more of it than on the media. And, and so we won't need to go into all that. But essentially, this guy called it right last time. He predicted Biden with 306. Um, whether you, you know, whether how accurate that is or not, we don't going to go into all of that. But essentially, he's saying that uh, in his models that Trump wins, uh, wins Pennsylvania. And uh, that's really what it comes down to. Uh, so so whether or not that happens or not, the markets are reacting favorably uh, because of a likely pro Bitcoin cabinet and nothing more. Now, I'm not going to get into politics, uh, whatever your viewpoints are, et cetera, et cetera, I think. That's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about the markets are reacting towards more certainty today than there was yesterday. And so what we are seeing, and here's the value of our indicators. And if you're just seeing this for the first time, this these arrows, the early reversal indicator, um, you know, I don't really do this, but let me pull this up because the arrow is just the visual uh, of the indicator that we show you guys, because to look at the actual oscillator, is kind of painful, but um, but let's look at this because I think it's important, especially if any of you are more sophisticated traders and you're like, that's a that's nice red arrow, green arrow. I've seen that uh, before, and that is what it is. Essentially, what the accidental discovery was was I noticed that when this uh, prior oscillator that we had uh, had gone below a certain uh, level and above a certain level within three time periods. A very highly likelihood it would continue on and complete the oscillation, aka an early reversal. Similarly, on the top side, if it got above a certain level and then came back down above 97, below 80 in three time periods, uh, very likely that uh, it would come all the way down and oscillate again. So what uh, we did is our uh, mad scientist genius, um, a good friend, partner, and quantum engineer, trader, mathematician, wizard, you name it, Joe, 
<laughs> all that, uh, but a uh, uh, simple name, but um, um, brilliant uh, guy. So we coded this. So this is the actual ERI. I know it's kind of painful to look at. That's why we created the arrows, right? So, but what it means in the pattern that I noticed, and I'll just tell you, I didn't know why that it would do this. We've since come to believe that these patterns are programmatic, institutional buying and selling, which is why it's reliable. Because otherwise we see movements that fail and don't have that follow through. Okay, we just happen to put arrows on this. So let's take a look at uh, this right back here, this, this oscillation. So um, essentially it's a smooth oscillator. And what I noticed was when it came down to even zero or even below three, like right in here, right around three and above 20, you know, many oscillators use this, you know, zero to 20, 80 to 100 zone, this being overbought, this being oversold. And when it comes up above this in three time periods, that's key. High likelihood of follow through. And then we've overlaid a second and third indicators. When they line up, we're good to go. And that's why we created the trade success checklist. So I'm just trying to make sure everyone's on the same page here because uh, I'm seeing really interesting bullish signs right now and I want you guys to understand it. And if you don't have these indicators by the end of this presentation, you're going to want them. And um, you can go over to our website and go to the cryptomastery.org uh, uh, slash pro to see these. But but uh, you know not to make it into a commercial, but you're going to want to have these if you don't already. Uh, it's the basis of everything we do here, um, plus plus simple TA, of course, and these work in conjunction with whatever you've used in the past. But if you're if you're using the standard RSI, MACD, etc., you're at a disadvantage because everyone else is using those, and they're much more lagging than these. These are sort of predictive. So right back here, we see that the price right here was down around below three, came up, and in one time period, two time periods. And it sh it flagged in here. Joe Joe overlaid something called a Keltner channel, which is similar to a Bollinger Band. We're not going to get into the differences, but these signals are triggered by um, more than just meets the eye. Just so you know that uh, we've just made it simple. Vertical green line. So right in here, was that a good signal? Let me turn off uh, these other ones and we'll turn them back on because I want you guys to see this. And even if you've seen it before to uh, to reinforce why this is so important. And so here, sure enough, you see the green arrow. I've just turned those on. This vertical green line is showing because of this, right? Not because of the arrow. The arrow is a representation. But this is because it went below three and above 20 in three time periods. So look at that. And we also had a bullish engulfing candle. And so what do we have right now? We have an early reversal indicator also. So let's just look at this. Came down, hit the zero line yesterday, last two days, and it's in one day, two days, it's up back above the 20 line. So we are getting the bullish early reversal indicator. Beautiful in there. And of course, I forecasted this almost exactly on the day, the election day, and also the market cycle low. Uh, if you're not familiar, we have uh, recently this summer put out a course called Market Cycle Secrets with Juan Villaverde, uh, who has uh, studied Hearst's uh, market cycle models. Excellent course. I'm not here to sell that. It's not even open right now. But the the <laughs> the um, the uh, sort of correlation of that uh, of both of those today is why I thought today would be a big day. And so I have had this zigzag drawn on here. And those of you in our classes know that I had zig this zigzag was here for days and um and it, it went right exactly to where I had it. I have not changed this date. I only changed the depth a little bit. I thought it might have held here. It went a little lower. I thought we might come down to 66. And actually, did we? Uh, I, you know, it may have hit exactly some of the people who had their buy limit orders in yesterday. Um, not exactly didn't quite get into that buy zone, um, but that's OK. And uh, Paul, if you're here, kudos to you for uh, getting filled with that limit order, because uh, I know you're a little nervous yesterday. But look at that. We're up twenty five hundred points today on Bitcoin. So so with that in mind, we have the bullish ERI. This is the same. And, um, you know, incidentally, this on a weekly time frame is very much part of our topping um, our get out of the market signals. Those of you who've been here for a while know this is exactly how not only I was telling us to get out of the market here before this drop, 
Uh, but at the market cycle top, all the way back here in 2021, our, our ERI, our bearish ERI in the weekly, bull, bearish engulfing candle. And then when it coincides with uh, the trend strength indicator, this TSI going red, right? And I'll, I'll bring it over to modern uh, times right now. Um, so weekly we use for bearish, uh, daily more for bullish, daily and monthly. I know it sounds a little bit incongruent, but um, that's the way it is. We have one called the signal line, which also went red back on the last market cycle top. And then, of course, we had our RSI Pro, which showing bearish divergence. And that was also that top back in November of 2021 and December of 2021 when I was telling people to get into cash. And then January of 2022, I was pounding the table, get out of the market. And sure enough, that was the top. Uh, so point is, it's really not that much about me. It's about the signals. And we are so fortunate to have these. So if you don't have these, make sure you get them. Uh, you can get them for $497 for the year where there is a, a lifetime offer of, over on that page for $1,497. So um, if you're planning to maximize this bull market, you, you're going to want to have these. I know many of you do already. Uh, so enough about that. I mostly want to show you how to use them optimally. And of course, on the monthly time frame, uh, that bullish ERI has only triggered four times in history. The most recent one right here, January of 2023, where I was again telling people to get back in the markets. And we've since added these buy order blocks. We didn't even have that. This was a judgment call based on this bullish engulfing monthly candle and the ERI on the monthly time frame. I had also forecasted 16.5 would be the, the low right in that range. And so, it, you, you know, look, a little it's a little bit of luck, a little bit of spidey sense, a lot of uh, experience. And um, uh, so it's exciting though, when we do have, we do find we have an edge. So where are we right now? Uh, and, and I do want to temper the excitement to a little bit. Markets may sell off toward the end of the day. We do still have a sell block up above. And what we really need to see happen is the market kind of a build structure on these rising moving averages. But it's more bullish than bearish, certainly. Now, we still could come down without losing any enthusiasm. Even if we turn into a red candle by the end of the day, I'm not worried. We have six, let me just open this up and we will get to the news, you guys, but let's, we have had six red candles in a day. Pretty much that's, pre, that's pretty rare. And then if we do, let's say for whatever reason that thing sells off and it comes all the way down to 65,848, maybe the midpoint of the buy block, 65,500. Uh, I'm not worried. I'll be buying. I'll be buying there for sure. And that would be seven red candles in a row because then I think we'd certainly go higher. Um, I think we'd probably go higher if today, and here is specifically how to read this. If today we have a bullish engulfing candle, and that's by, I think it's 7 p.m. Eastern now because of the daylight saving time. It's always based on sort of the GMT uh, it's complicated, but uh, at the end of the daily closing candle, if we're green, bullish engulfing, we have the ERI and let's look at our TSI. The TSI hasn't gone green yet, but that's typically our secondary confirming or confirmation signal with the TSI. So just like back in here, that was the last time that would have gone and it caught a nice little push up there. Um, but what we do have forming is our RSI Pro. So, you know, these are different algorithms. And the more congruence there is, and that's a key word, more confluence, more congruence, uh, the better. Uh, getting Showing bullish divergence here, hidden bullish divergence, this green circle. So that's good. And so I am uh, cautiously optimistic on this, and uh, I'm going to be buying back into some coins, And um, but I'm really probably waiting on the altcoins. I sold a lot of the altcoins that were looking good back in this range. I believe Bitcoin and Solana, maybe ETH, are going to lead. Chainlink I like, but maybe not yet. And I think a Bitcoin and Sol are going to lead this. So does anybody, everyone get that? We're getting this nice bullish candle. And uh, if it closes above this range, I think we do push up in this area. And with that in mind, I'm going to move this over because we've seen these cycles really accelerate. I think 80K, if we break new all-time highs, 80K is, is very likely. 
probably a pullback retests of the old highs on then on to 100. Maybe um, we're going to have some issues there. Part of the problem is the total market cap has a lot of sell pressure showing up in this range. So we're not out of the woods yet, but it does look very good. I like that we have the ERI, the 21 and 50 day ERI is still uptrending the 50 day EMA. I misspoke there. I'm sorry, the 21 and 50 day exponential moving averages. These are the orange line and the green line. You can see it over on the left, EMA, exponential moving average. There's a number of different kinds, by the way. There are simple moving averages. There's another one, which is an HMA, which uh, Joe is telling me about and had labeled in one of the indicators that we use, but it's too confusing for you guys. So we're just leaving it in there. And um, But I like the EMA. All right, what I'm saying here is, <clears throat> look at this great support. If Bitcoin, if you're lucky enough to put in, if you put in a buy limit order at 66K and one at 67K, then getting filled in here, there's a lot of confluence. Uh, this green box, these are buy limit orders on the exchange. Uh, let's go over to uh, the an actual exchange like Coinbase because that was the overall index, which we can see this on uh, Bit, Bitstamp. And this is Binance. I have a Coinbase one, but they we see this across the board on the exchanges. These green boxes are are limit buy orders we can see on the exchange, and that data is available to us. Similarly, that red box up above is sell pressure at 72k, 73k, also there. So more than likely, we're going to see this kind of zigzag up in this kind of a pattern, and then. Um, let's see, I'm gonna have to get a hold of trading view guys. Okay, now it works. Once we break this area though, maybe we zigzag, but once we're up in this range, that's price discovery zone, we are off to the races. And so um, it's gonna be an epic battle though. There are a couple big shorts, very vocal shorts, uh, saying that uh, this was it and we're going back down to 20K. I don't, I don't think so, you guys. And when those big shorts flip bullish and get caught in a short squeeze, uh, it's gonna really pump Really pump the prices. Let me see. I do see some, some chat in here. And where is the chat? Uh, KS, uh, crypto dominant strikes again. Thank you. I, I will take it. You know, look, uh, you know, sometimes I'll joke and say even a blind squirrel finds a nut once in a while, but we have been, um, we have been very good and I've been doing very well. Speaking of squirrels, uh, what a tragedy that New York state, um, have you guys heard of peanut, the squirrel man, Anyway, uh, not to get into that, but uh, just tragic. Uh, so if you don't know the story, look it up online. A man was had pets. He had a raccoon and a pet squirrel named Peanut. And cute as a button. And the New York State took it away and they euthanized them. Uh, not to not to inject any negativity there, but just to, anyway. But um, well, how did we get on the squirrel? The squirrel comment. Um, yeah, uh, the so we've we've. we've We've been very good at this and uh, I've been right more often than wrong. And so, uh, you know, on occasion, I'll earn the Cryptodamus nickname. Today we did. Look at that zigzag, you guys. Boom, 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 boom to the day, everybody. So we'll see what happens. I'm cautiously optimistic and because I'm a pessimistic optimist. And uh, as a trader, that's the good. That's the right way to be. Um, yeah, Dr. T, I know. Hopefully there are people are held accountable for that. There's just no place for that. And uh, hopefully PETA and ASPCA get involved. Uh, terrible. Um, but anyway, we are here to talk about the markets. And so let's see. <laughs> hey, Peanut will decide the outcome of this election. Yes. Well, let's hope so. And I hope somebody makes a t-shirt and it says, remember Peanut on it, because I think that would go viral. And as it should, and, and, and jobs should be lost for that one. All right, enough about that, but our hearts are with you, Peanut. All right, let's see. So, but let's see what happens here. I do think we're heading higher. I'm going to be buying in in the today. I'm going to be buying. Uh, not all of it. I think it's it makes sense to have some powder dry if we get a scare and we come back down in the 66K range. But um, I did not sell my Bitcoin up here. Kind of wish I had, but the problem with that is that hindsight is, let's say that we had sold it up here and we didn't buy it back last night. Now we're up here. Now we're wondering, I don't know, should I buy it? Should I wait? And let's say it goes boom up higher and then you miss it. That's why uh, in the M3 Active Trader class, I'm always teaching you guys how much to sell at key inflection points and why, and then when to buy back and then what, what to do if it does run up above because there's usually a pullback spot. 
And so um, uh, anyway, you guys can learn more about that uh, at moonstream.io slash M3. I'll just give you a little bit of a glimpse. I don't, I never know who quite is here. I know a lot of the M3 students are here. But if you go check this out, uh, it's 24-7 um, signal chat. I'm in there every day <clears throat> giving uh, market calls and recommendations and um and specific coin picks so you can you get access so to me here's a look at that actually from today and a bunch of commentary news some really smart traders in here time very up to the minute charts and things like that so anyway that's why that's where the real value is as well as our wednesday class tomorrow where we deep dive a little deeper like this into things like the dxy total market cap etc and those classes also not only are recorded we have an AI summary now. So if you're in a hurry, you can get that and skim through it if you miss the class. Uh, but you can see people uh, are saying that great class here. Uh, some of the students here that are here today. So, um, you know, and a membership area with some trainings, some cheat sheets, a interactive dollar cost averaging template, a portfolio tracker, all these things that are really useful for, especially if you're a beginner trader, high probability candlestick patterns, and uh, even trading patterns. And uh, here is a uh, sort of my goofy uh, glasses and trading station, which is what I'm looking at right now. Yes, I actually trade. So a lot of these YouTubers uh, don't. And there you have it. Mm -hmm. All right. So uh, let's see some testimonials. You can go review that. I'm tr not trying to make this a super long commercial. You also get a, you can get an hour long training session with me, which is normally a thousand dollars. And we'll be taking that down in the next few months. That's not going to be there for 2025. And you can see some people with their hats on. All right. Um, you guys, right now, I feel like I would be doing you a disservice by not telling you about these classes because they are that good. And it's been quiet. It's been difficult. But those in the class know we've been waiting for this moment for a long time now. And now is the time that we're about to go higher. And you're going to want to know uh, what to do and how to play that. Because a lot of these YouTubers, I think, are wrong. I think the four-year cycle is wrong. I don't think that happens, uh, as everyone expects, into 2025. And uh, it's a very fluid situation. So um, with that, uh, let's see. Let's go over to the news, and then we'll come back and we'll look at some other things, but just a quick look. Solana, nice uh, push up on Solana. Looks good to me. And ETH sort of still looking weak. I mean, I've been saying I think Bitcoin Solana run and lead this bit this next uh, this next rally. That's what I think. Alrighty, uh, over to the news, shall we? <laughs> um, sorry, there was a funny picture in here with me looking up like that because <laughs> that's where my top monitor is now. All right, that's funny. Uh, oh, and there it is. I'll just move, just move stuff around. A lot of people here today. All right, guys. So let's dive into it. Uh, of course, the election's on everyone's mind. And so whatever happens today, I was watching something last night and uh, the guy, I think I already mentioned it. So the, the uh, predictions are all over the board. There are YouTubers saying that um, as much, somebody was saying as much as a 95% chance Trump win. I don't think that's the case. Uh, and, and guys, we're not going to talk about politics here. We're merely talking about the effect of the election and certainly uh, the Republican administration, more um, pro-crypto with RFK and Cynthia Loomis and uh, Tim Scott uh, saw both of them speak at the Bitcoin conference. Uh, would love to see uh, Tim Scott as a Treasury Secretary and, uh, and Cynthia Loomis and RFK involved. So, you know, um, it that to me is mostly what it comes down to. What's going to be the crypto favorable and plus the economy. I mean, the economy certainly drives all of this. Uh, not to make, a, I'm not trying to edge anyone out of their beliefs at all, but just this is uh, what we are looking for is how the market reacts to the news. Show me the charts. I'll tell you the news. You guys have heard me say that a hundred times. Um, back to that example. So I was watching one analyst say 95%. I think that's not right. There was another one um, in, so of course there's poly market, which is showing 60, 40, but that's skewed. Can't rely on that. Uh, more, I think more Republicans are betting and gambling mentality. Um, but of course, I, I asked Alexa last night, she's going to come on now probably, uh, who uh, would win. And they uh, they or she said it's dead even, 48.5. So so what that means is we have to be prepared for anything. And, uh, and of course, my third hat here. 
but just for your guys' entertainment, all we really care about is, right, making money great again. All right, a little Trump joke there. Um, forgive me. Now I got that at the Bitcoin conference. So, um, and, and that's of course not all we we care about. But uh, let's see, 2024 elections live, crypto on the ballot. As I said, I don't want to get too deep into this. You guys probably already aware. Uh, but the uh, regulations have certainly been uh, less than favorable. I was going to say unfavorable, less than favorable in the uh, prior uh, administration. And um, so Gary Gensler, of course, um, leading the charge. Who's pulling his strings? Hard to say. Maybe it's Janet Yellen um, and who's pulling hers? Don't know. But at the Bitcoin conference, uh, there was a rip roaring uh, applause when Donald Trump said on day one he would fire Gary Gensler. Uh, and uh, certainly uh, we would like to see this here. <laughs> Meet the pro crypto contenders who could replace SEC chief Gary, uh, chief Gary Gensler. Um, and, and folks, if you're if you're a Democrat and I, I'm not trying to upset anybody here, we're just just doing the news. OK, um, let's see. Contenders. I think we don't want to go too far into this. I'm curious, though. And uh, yeah, so he said this said over. Uh, he said they would fire Gensler. Um, we, we certainly can't argue with Gary Gensler has been very in, uh, anti crypto and uh, regulating through enforcement when Coinbase repeatedly has wanted to just get some regulatory clarity. And uh, so let's see. Uh, actually, this is interesting. The U.S. president can fire Gensler, but it won't be easy. All right. This is why we unpack the news, because we we we. That's I thought they could just say you're, you're out of here, you're fired, but he must present a proper case such as neglect, inefficiency or some other form of malfeasance. Um, OK, well, well, that uh, means less clarity. I mean, that's not what I wanted to read, actually, but not. It's not a given either that that administration wins. So it happens with a while before someone who steps in a Trump face resignation wouldn't be surprising. So maybe Gensler re re um, resigns. Uh, but we don't know. Let's see. <clears throat> and possible leaders should change. There's claims of close connections. Harris team that uh, bright line regulation opposes regulation via litigation. And uh, Cuban says he believes Harris would likely remove Gensler as SEC chair. So maybe we get rid of Gensler either way. Uh, the obvious in issue is Gensler. And if my guess is, I think this is Mark Cuban, based on the lack of public support, he's gone. OK, well, maybe we win either way. Uncertain uh, replacement. I think we are going down a rabbit hole here. Who is this? Uh, who is this? Hester Pierce, crypto mom. The industry wants. All right. Good name to have on our, our radar. Um, okay. So SEC Commissioner Hester Pierce, I have not heard her name before, is believed to be a potential contender to take the Gensler spot and positions. Okay. So uh, ideal candidate. I didn't know which uh, which party was uh, was proposing this crypto friendly regulatory approach as SEC chair. And that's all we want, you guys some meaningful, clear regulation. So even if we agree with that regulation or not, then the coin bases of the world can at least play within the lines of that. And I think we can all agree on that. Uh, let's see, Pierce Research Finance for Market Regulation at George Mason University, which is locally here in the DC area, uh, served as an advisor to the Senate Committee on Banking, Housing and Urban Affairs. Okay. Um, all right, so we'll keep an eye out for her. Let's see. She made it to the SEC after former President Barack Obama and nominated her as SEC commissioner. OK, so she's got some creds, street cred, some credentials. And I just didn't know. But uh, let's see. Pierce is the most popular regulator, nicknamed her crypto mom. I'm, I'm cool with that. You know, hey, why not? And I think I did see something about maybe it was her. A former SEC chair was very vocally criticizing uh, Gary Gensler's aggressive approach, as we see here. And uh, yeah, so she also was on a dissenting opinion on that. So that's good. All right. Well, I'm glad we unpacked that a little bit. And um, some more advocacy if uh, communities hope that Trump would choose her as Gensler's replacement. So there you go. All right. Uh, let's not get let's, let's see. Oh, there's one more. The crypto data of Bitcoin futures. Let's just skim this. Um, I don't know. Right away, the bald head scared me <laughs> because it looked like Gensler from here from here down. Um, 
yeah, just no offense. Uh, let's see. And then Chris Broomer, um, another guy in the mix. So we have to see, you know, we're just, uh, it's just mental speculation at this. So there's a bunch of people out here. Um, okay, we don't know. Let's not, let's not waste time on it until we know who is going to be the uh, next uh, U.S. president. 2024 U.S. elections live. Crypto is on the ballot. And so we'll turn our highlighter here. What do you guys think? Any chats? I see some chats coming in. All right. Uh, let's see. I err on the side of caution, trust, intuition, and crypto Thomas. Thank you, Dr. T. And uh, maybe I'll have to get one of those funny hats, you know. Um, actually, have you ever seen one of my favorite commercials of all time? And I, I think it's an E-Trade commercial. But uh, the lady comes in and she has like the Swami hat. And, uh, you know, she, and, and she keeps guessing wrong. And the guy's like, so I've been meaning to talk to you about, and she goes, a raise? And he says, no, uh, more about my financial performance. And, and I was thinking, and she's like, you should pay me more money. And uh, it's just, uh, it's, it's it's damn funny. But um, uh, great ad. But anyway, I'd never forget the sort of a fortune teller hat. Maybe I need one of those. Um, although on second thought, I don't think that would be a good luck for me. Uh, let's see. So the sooner we get financial independence using cryptos, the sooner we can reduce government tyranny over us, our pets, our lives. Yeah, I mean, I, I'm, I, I've not used the word tyranny myself uh, yet. And I hope we don't get to that point because, you know, then we've got we've got some really much bigger questions and and, uh, you know, we're talking civil war and things like that. And, and there'd be nothing civil about that because unfortunately, you know, the government still controls the military. So, um, you know, we need to figure this stuff out and uh, hopefully that we're, we're there and we that our voting system will prevail. What, whichever way is going to, you know, all right. Sooner we get financial independence using cryptos. Yeah. But the cryptos it will help with that. Look, guys, I think that we are headed that way. In all of this, I'm trying to cover the bases a bit. I will tell you when I feel strongly. And, um, you know, I've said numerous times, it's like Victor Hugo said, nothing can stop an idea whose time has come. The adoption in crypto worldwide, although still very early, is continuous and it's positive and uh, the momentum is there. It's an idea whose time has come. And so, you know, we we are in the right place. We are early. So just no matter what, I mean, of course, we're going to try to get out at the top and buy back later. But if nothing else, if you just put some Bitcoin away and ETH and Sol and Link and and just for five years, 10 years, um, you're going to be OK. OK. And um, so that's the bottom line. But we are here, especially an M3 active trader where we're, it's a swing trading service. We we are, I am of the opinion that the buy and hold or hodl mentality uh, is outdated. We want to be in the market long term, but we want to be trading the swings. And we've been very good knowing where those inflection points are. I've nearly doubled my Solana in my IRA just by selling high, buying low, selling high, buying low. And, um, uh, and hopefully on this swing, I will have doubled it since May. So anyway, um, KS uh, says he met with Sam Bankman-Fried behind closed doors and greenlit FTX. Gensler did that? I think I I, I didn't hear all the detail on that. But, um, you know, there's a whole lot of fallout here with this FTX. And, and so I just heard that the uh, FTX is selling, uh, suing. Uh, suing um, Bybit, which um, which I think is absolutely right. Bybit is a shady, manipulated organization based out of Singapore. Uh, they certainly manipulate price, especially in the margin market. Uh, and I have a six-figure loss to prove it back in February of 2022 when I was right shorting the market on Bitcoin, but their predatory market maker, Algo, went right after this position. Even though I had more money coming in to raise a liquidation price, I have screenshots where I went, bink, just like that, it it took out, it liquidated position, and then it accounted for the money I'd sent over from Gemini. Uh, not uh, sh not uh, that definitely shady, and, and I, I hope that I can bring part of class action against them because the SEC, uh, sorry, FT, FTX is, is suing Bybit for similar shenanigans for a lot of money. I hope they win. I, I think uh, Bybit's. Uh, <laughs> certainly, certainly operating outside of the watchful eye of the SEC and very likely outside of the uh, of the law. 
Uh, and if they if, if Bybit wants to sue me, um, uh, they can take a long uh, walk off a short pier. So um, uh, but anyway, we're here. This, we, we know this is a zero sum game. Um, learned a lot. Hey, look, the most expensive lessons are the best ones. And um, so one of those also is not keep all of your crypto on one exchange. I uh, am also part of a class action lawsuit against Coinbase. Uh, for locking me and a lot of people out of their accounts in the summer of 2021. Hard to sell your crypto when the markets are tanking if you can't log in. Uh, nevertheless, um, it is, um, it's part of the, we're in the wild, wild west, you guys. It comes with the territory. Uh, no crying over spilt uh, Bitcoin. All right, um, let's see. I don't want to spend too much time in the news. Yeah, we're already coming up a quarter, three quarters of the hour. Um, so so the Bitcoin price jumped 3.7% as UX election fever begins. Part of this certainly on the based on the uh, the news and let's just um, of the uh, the pension in England and the favorable um, to try not to talk and type at the same time. It sometimes doesn't work out for me. Let's see, uh, uh, guys, I'm going to pull this up. Nobody have a conniption, please. This is um, just poly market it is most certainly skewed toward Republicans. Uh, who are more likely to be degenerate gamblers? <laughs> so, uh, it's just I'm just having a little fun, everybody. Uh, so they have it. So sixty forty uh, does doesn't mean this is the case. I'm just saying this is why the markets are likely rallying. There is a, a swing up and a swing down, and so there you go. If you want to go bet on this, which I don't recommend, by the way. I'm only saying that that could be why things are pumping up here. All right. All right. So um, subs, I just I did. I have had some comments in the past of people saying, hey, you really don't like uh, the uh, political um, commentary. So that's fair. We're here for trading only. I'm here for you and help make you guys money and navigate these tricky markets. So uh, let's see. Subsequent corrections swiftly to 69.5 short, mostly short positions, seeing liquidations. Yeah. And, and I, I think that's worth touching on. Um, we're going to see a lot of volatility here and we can't really we won't know until i think next week the true direction of the market uh, what happened here is the shorts piled on with high leverage shorts all through here so this push higher is partially a short squeeze okay and partially to get people to go leverage long there's you know i know most of you probably don't but over in asia uh, much more of a gambling mentality and um, so what's happening here is the market makers want these people to go leverage long and 5x, 10, 20x, 50, 100x long leverage, and they might let it run up to 60, 72K again, and then they'll pump, pull it back down again, potentially, and liquidate all of those, a lot of those longs. So we're going to see this, you know, I don't know this is a straight shot up. Uh, we have sell order blocks at 72.5. And that was right around that prior high. I mean, I think probably we have what we need ideally is another pullback, a higher low and some zigzag at this sell area, break up, retest, then we're off to 80K. Uh, so, you know, but on the uh, Elliott wave here, I do think the push is up here on the fifth wave to 80K. Uh, but but there's there's going to be some headwinds right in this range. We can see that on the total market cap. Uh, but um, but anything could happen. Um, you know, we we could see a big major leg up if we start seeing this TSI. And let me go back to our indicators, by the way. Uh, what's great about our indicators also is we can set alerts. So I'm going to set an alert on our trend strength indicator. And let's say we want to know when it crosses up. And I would say right around 44. So you can do it on a numerical basis. Okay. And I need to load a new version, though. There's actually a new version if you guys want to see it. Uh, so because I've been chatting and working with Joe, let me do this. I'm going to save my layout. And by the way, you should probably do this every now and then. Save your layout and then do a control R hard refresh. Uh, actually, you know, what? I'll take that back. Probably it's best to close and delete this the indicator. So I'm going to delete the TSI. And um, somehow I'm on Avalanche now. I don't know how that happened. Okay, so I deleted the indicator. I'm saving the layout. And then I'm going to do a hard refresh. And then I'm going to add the indicator back in. Uh, I do see some more comments. I'll get to your comments here in a moment. Still no idea why this is. Uh, anyway, it doesn't matter. So save. Yeah, 
let's do this. Now I'm going to go back into our indicators. And as you can see under invite only scripts, when you sign up for the Crypto Mastery Signals, which you should do today, this is for you, not for me. You definitely want to have these. You get seven indicators, the rocket, which we're going to talk about, the alert scanner. I haven't shown you that. And uh, the alert pro, that's sort of new. Crypto screener, actually. Yeah. Sorry, guys. The alert screeners, we've got a, we've got a screener coming out. A scanner screener and alert service. You heard, I wasn't supposed to leak that yet. But for now, the crypto screener, uh, the ERI Pro, the Trend Pro, the TSI Pro, the order block detector, the RSI Pro, the Bollinger Bands, and the signal line all do different things. But um, what we're going to do now is um, stay with me now. This is important. The TSI Pro, I'm re-adding this. And um, I think that's all I wanted to do right now. I think so, yes. So with that, hopefully I do have the latest version. And, um, you know, you guys know uh, the four kings are, are essentially ERI, TSI, Signal, and, and either the RSI or the trend indicator. So we've got a number of these. Confluence is key. And what I'm doing here is, again, this is the trend strength indicator. So, pop, so valuable when it comes out of oversold zone and gives you that green chevron or the red up above breaking below 80. What I want to know here is if, um, yeah, so we see we have these different symbols now when it turns green, okay, that when, when this circle turns green, that's what I want. This is new, you guys. So how to use this? If I wanted to know when we get the next oversold uh, thing here, uh, it's a little tricky because we have it as a square. I need, I need to give uh, Joe a video. Uh, because in the coding, it only gives us a square on the alerts, whereas I was able to change this on my settings to a Chevron. That's just my personal preference. But this, if you want an alert whenever we get that green mark, choose oversold. If you want to know just when it turns green like these, then we'll do it as a circle. And, uh, and and we're going to continue to tweak that a little bit. But I want to know the next time this goes, and I'm going to say when it goes green, I'm going to say bye, because I already know my ERI is green. So the path, the, the path is ERI, TSI, signal, and bell, or ERI, TSI, signal, and RSI. Um, those are the four horsemen. This is our signal line. It's a different oscillator. When it goes green, we get a pump. Green and a pump, green and a pump, okay? And then our, our RSI Pro, of course, so which is now turning green. Typically, if I have any two or more of these, then um, I'm green, then I'm bullish. And uh, so with that, let's see. Uh, so Kay is saying uh, he, uh, apparently meaning Gary Gensler, met with Sam Bankman-Fried. I do, I do recall hearing that behind closed doors and greenlit FTX. Yeah, that that's, that's definitely kind of shady. Uh, and so Perry says, if Trump wins the election, the, the selection, did you mean to say it that way? I guess. Um, yeah. Well, anyway, I, I, you're, you spelled it selection, but I'm going to just say election. We'll leave our tin hat theories off for now. And the market, uh, crypto market pumps, it seems like it would be a temporary pump just as much as if Kamala wins, it would be a temporary dip. Yeah, I would agree with that. Um, there are certainly some fears of inflation on the horizon, uh, raising its ugly head. We have FOMC and we have economic data coming up. Don't forget. Uh, so, you know, this is temporary. We'll watch and as this thing goes along. But uh, then back to the market fundamentals, which are beyond any puppet actor sitting in a White House scenario. Okay. Um, yeah, I mean, I think that I think that either way, we're going to see some overreaction and some settling out on these markets. And what that really is going to entail is lots of market uh, liquidations and then sort of the true, uh, you know, uh, w when there's too much, you know, leverage in the system, we need to flush out the leverage. And sometimes that's that's quite large. Even a billion dollars in leverage needs to get wiped out at some times to let the market get back to doing what it does and what it's supposed to do. OK, so. um Hey, as Gensler is ostensibly connected to the Bankman Freed family, I have not heard that. Um, she, I, I don't, I don't really even want to dive into that right now. But um, 
Yeah, I don't know though. Why why would that why would he have been so anti-crypto when that obviously, you know, that certainly led to or led towards the demise of quite a lot of uh crypto companies. But you know what? I mean, in the early days it needs to happen. And FTX in many ways was the kind of the fall guy. You know, maybe Sam was the useful idiot just saying, sure. Here's all kinds of money. Sure, let's support. We're just, you know, all the time they're like, all right, we're going to make an example of this this kid who doesn't know what he's doing. Ah, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, all right. Okay, so this, uh, he was a professor at MIT teaching cryptography. All right. And then he got hired to lead the SEC. Yeah. Um. Yeah, thanks. Good comments as always, KS. And um, uh, KS is uh, in our M3 Active Trader group and uh, vocal in there as well. Okay, you guys. Well, um, that's good stuff. Let's finish the news. Uh, if you have any more comments, feel free to drop that over there. And coming up on the hour, so I want to kind of get through this quickly. Uh, FBI warning the public about fake videos misleading voters. You know, AI has become so good, uh, it's almost impossible to tell. So I would say no matter what you hear, Take it with a grain of salt and um, don't believe everything that you hear. Um, especially, by the way, especially any celebrity um, saying, send me your Bitcoin, I'll double it. These are all fake, you guys. Uh, Michael Saylor, they do it all the time. What they do is they, they create a new YouTube channel and they make it look like a legitimate channel. And they have other videos of said expert that's, that's Michael Saylor always usually. And then recently, though, they had Elon uh, in a video fake, a deep fake of Elon saying, just send me your Bitcoin and we'll double it. Uh, I was in Mexico and I had somebody say, is this real? And without even seeing it, I'm like, no, 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 no. Never send your crypto to anybody that's, that's for any reason. OK, um, and and uh, there's a lot of these AI scams out there, including people having their loved ones allegedly call and say they need money for, uh, you, you know, and it's not it's not them. So anyway, uh, in one case, fake news clip false to claimed FBI had warned Americans to vote remotely due to high terror threats of polling stations. That's not true. Um, yeah, yeah, that's not the case. I mean, I just went over and dropped my, um, I, I did vote mail in cause I don't want to stay stand in line for an hour, but it was totally safe. Uh, let's see rigged inmate voting in coordination political party. So just, yeah, the bottom line is don't believe any of these, um, AI videos, uh, cast first vote selection against cross United States and so she press, uh, Trump was says Mark predict her. I don't know. There's a lot. Let's we just I'm not going to get into the the predictions machine. Um, mm -hmm, bigger predictions or promises, and, and saying Trump has broken promises in the past, and crypto intent to lower crypto voters. I I mean, yeah. I I just you know as with any politician, they're going to say whatever it will help them get them elected. And uh, so let's see, Nashville. Yes, I was there. And will Trump follow through? I mean, I think I think that that he would, based on the promises that he made very publicly. Uh, let's see whether whether this is true. He wanted all remaining Bitcoin to be made in the USA. Clearly, he doesn't understand that anyone can mine Bitcoin. And uh, currently, ninety percent of the you the the mined Bitcoin has been uh, twenty one. Whoops, uh, has been mined, you know, so that's also true. Uh, I was recent reading something recently about uh, some Chinese miners that had bought up or were trying to buy up um, old coal mines in uh, various states that had no longer had uh, uh, coal there to, to mine Bitcoin favorable energy rates, but uh, that, uh, that it didn't work out business wise. And certainly, you know, I, I want to be careful how I say this. Nothing against Chinese people, but the mentality apparently was they were they would roll in here and mine like crazy for three months and then not pay their energy bill. I um there's there's a certain mentality of uh let's say communist regimes, you know, Russia, China, in my in my experience. Um 
that if you're dumb enough to fall for it, then it, they're legitimized by uh, scamming you. It's kind of it's kind of that mentality. So, um, you know, there's less, less emotional IQ over in those places. Anyway, so uh, as well, possible desire to get American number Bitcoin mining, America solidifies position of competitive place to mine Bitcoin in the world. Trump produces red tape, increases support and investment for energy and electricity, electricity infrastructure. Uh, I mean, I will say in support of, as I've often said, Cynthia Lomas and uh, her stance in Wyoming that uh, negating the Bitcoin carbon problem because they're taking the methane from oil refining, refining, <laughs> that's a new word, refining, refining of uh, oil and taking that methane to burn to for fuel to power Bitcoin mining. So it's carbon neutral. Uh, so because methane's a pretty clean burning uh, energy source. So that's certainly interesting. And I think that's, something we should be looking into for sure and uh, going carbon neutral. Let's see, Gagnon, I'm, you know, the, the big thing coming is hydrogen powered cars. It's just, you have to get through that red tape. Let's see. Yeah. And so notably this person yeah, admitted that one country can't mine all the Bitcoin. So yeah. So Trump doesn't know what he's talking about there. Uh, you, you know, it wouldn't be the first time. I, I think he means well, but, but may not know what he's talking about. It's not possible, desirable that hundred percent of Bitcoin mine in the U S or any other country. Also true. And uh, there was some talk about solving the U.S. three and thirty-five trillion dollar national debt. I mean, if Satoshi is the CIA, great uh, national debt, and we're good. <laughs> so that million Bitcoin, um, let wait for the right day, and then we'll just say, all right, here uh, we're just gonna erase our debt and uh, be uh, number one in the world again. Um, but anyway, not no evidence at this point that that's true, other than that white paper floated around that CIA was talking about 256 hash uh, back before all of this started. All right, you guys, this is all dubious speculation, as Ben Cowan says. And so uh, that's as far as I want to get into it. Some talk of the U.S. creating a strategic Bitcoin reserve. I mean, it's worth noting that um, that at least it was mentioned. And if uh, the Republicans get in office and if Trump plans and accomplishes a strategic Bitcoin stockpile, that would certainly push the prices much higher. I don't know if you'd have to go through Congress and, and in the House and everything to do that, though. Um, hopefully they did say they'd hold on to the Bitcoin they have. And a lot of it's from those uh, seizures, like from Silk Road, et cetera. <clears throat> and certainly that would be uh, better. And okay, so so these people saying Harris win unlikely to rock the Bitcoin price, but crypto fears persist. Uh, I think, um, you know, because of economic uh, woes, I mean, we're not in the best economic shape for many reasons, COVID being one of them. But that's also why we spent seven trillion uh, in the back in the prior administrations for that COVID fallout. You know, I certainly hope that uh, that people are held accountable for that and um, and, and and whoever they are. Anyway, um, Lumis to build a Bitcoin strategy to create a Bitcoin fund, hedge against the national debt. Yeah, so let's talk about Cynthia Lumis. She's great. And um, <clears throat> the goal is to acquire 1 million Bitcoin over five years and hold for 20 years. So with backing in Congress, so that's what I was saying, will Congress back that may actually have a chance of seeing the light of day? I will take that over a no chance. Still, it require a number of fellow lawmakers to realize Bitcoin's potential. Right, so we would need that all also. All right, uh, we've covered all this. Fire Gary Gensler, day one, uh, some political speak. Uh, stop development to the CBDC. We don't want a CBDC. Set Silk Road operator Ross Albrecht free. Uh, they had shirts at the conference saying, set Ross free. I, I, you know, um, I think Trump is trying to, to buy votes here, saying he would set Ross free. Uh, Ross, of course, the creator of the Silk Road underground um, drug uh, railroad, I guess, and um, illegal things, direct market, Silk Road, permitted illegal trading of drugs, weapons, and other unlawful goods. He said he would commute the sentence. So, I, I mean, you know, I don't know. That's trying to just outright buy Bitcoin votes, but um, a kind of so, yeah. All right, let's see. One more article here Bitcoin price target 120K says analyst has key metric flips bullish. I'm curious which one that is, the MVRV ratio. You know, these are on-chain metrics, uh, Glassnode, um, CryptoQuant. I don't dive into those because they're typically lagging. 
And but I will give you guys the highlighter here and could be six figure range by 2025. You know, I, I think that realistically we get to 100K, 125K next year. Uh, 150 uh, is I've laid a case for that. I'm just um, spidey sense. We just get we get just shy of that. I don't know. I don't know. And that's it. Could be wrong. I will be taking profits in that range and looking very carefully for our bear market rollover or any sell blocks. And let's uh, not be tied to a number. We'll talk about that a little bit more tomorrow and some prediction points and models that I've been working on. All right. Any more questions, chats? Uh, let's see. Yeah. Yeah. The Chris Perry saying, uh, let's see. Actually, I missed uh, Vade saying, have you heard about the Bhutan Bitcoin strategy? Uh, no, I haven't. Vade, uh, feel free to drop a link below and let's look at that. I don't even really know where Bhutan is. I'm thinking Mongolia, Siberia, maybe. But um, I have not. Are they using natural energy? I, I have heard El Salvador has done very well mining Bitcoin with their volcano heat and steam. Um, El Salvador, big success story. I'm, you know, guys, at some point we will have other country FOMO coming in. It's one of my 10 factors on the path to 150, 250K Bitcoin. I'm surprised more countries haven't come in. You know, the news today that an English pension fund, they didn't name it specifically, but pension funds coming in, there's a lot of money on the sidelines waiting to come in at the right time. So, so what I mean by that is if, let's just say that, this next few months, we see like a quick flame out. At some point when the economy recovers fully, you know, uh, and then we get the big, massive, massive bull run and all that money in the sidelines. Uh, Bhutan is in the Himalayas. Okay, I was pretty close. They've been mining using their hydropower. Cool. Yeah. I, I mean, I had a friend, uh, you know, who's an interesting guy and zip lines over volcanoes and goes to space and things like that, who at one point was trying to uh, he was negotiating with the Russians to buy and take over an abandoned coal mine in Vladivostok, which is like eastern Siberia, also where my old programmer was from when I helped him before I helped him emigrate to the United States. Uh, but um uh, he's not a spy, by the way, everyone. Uh, he does bring uh, really good vodka over. It's made out of birch trees. Yeah, no, he was my programmer uh, back at the Options University. Helped him his family move over, and uh, he's a good guy. So uh, he's, he might be a spy, actually. <laughs> he, he, was, he was asking me a lot of strange questions last time I saw him. I don't know. I he, If he is, he didn't get me, just so you know. All right, so... Um, they had said is revealed September 2024. The Bhutan's government was the world's fifth largest holder of Bitcoin. Um, okay. Uh, I don't know if that is so. So it worries me a little bit if any one country is the largest holder. Like China holds a bunch of Bitcoin. Any any one of these could dump it all at any time. You know. Um, and and but it but they would might likely sell on the OTC market though. You know that wouldn't affect price. But that's good to know. And um. Good to know. All right. There was a comment here uh, that I missed. Let's see. Uh, Perry saying there's certain appropriateness that crypto mining could be actually using actual mines. Yes, uh, exactly. I, I own uh, a mining claim and somewhere in the remote areas of Colorado and uh, I can't build on. But, um, you know, maybe I could put some uh, never mind anything. Uh, and family owned. Uh, and so, but uh, putting solar and wind up there to mine Bitcoin. But the thing is, these days, though, that doesn't even work. Now, windmill is not going to mine a Bitcoin. <laughs> you need an ASIC machine, which is like a meat locker. Uh, you can walk in these. Uh, if you ever, if, if you haven't gone to the Bitcoin conference, you should go. It's in Las Vegas this year. And uh, go check out one of these uh, ASIC machines. Uh, they're very big and very expensive. All right, you guys, uh, this person saying Bitcoin price outlook hinges on 2024 U.S. election. We've already covered that. Let's finish the MVRV uh, score. Tar of the class. But uh, let's see. Uh, market tenders from CryptoQuant, opted for traditional posts utilizing MVRV to indicate or indir ind indirectly assess Bitcoin's current value. You know, there's all these indicators like the SOPR and the MVRV, and I just haven't found them to be that uh, useful. Uh, many of you know the story when I was in the um, hour-long session by the head of 
uh, Bitcoin Magazine. I, I won't name uh, him here this time, uh, Dylan McClare, <laughs> that <laughs> with what an hour long, you, you know, Unchained Metrics, uh, SOPR, MVRB, all the reasons Bitcoin would not go below 30,000. And at the end, it was in a private whale session. And I said, uh, uh, you know, I, you know, looked around the room, did one of these. Uh, what would you say to people like me who think that we go below 20K? And um, pretty much everyone scowled at me. And uh, he he very con, uh, con uh, what's the word, um, condescendingly was like, well, you know, look, I just spent an hour showing you why that's not going to happen. And I was like, OK, well, uh, anyway, we went to 16.5 where I thought that we would go. Uh, so these things, you know, there it's a bit like, um, well, I won't use the mental. Uh, I, I'll just let's just let's call it uh, dubious speculation. These things, uh, they they can have some correlation. I'm not saying ignore them, but it's going down a whole nother rabbit hole. All right. Uh, suggesting upward trend remains intact. Generally, the cycle peak tends to occur when the MVRV reaches levels between three and six. Yeah. What does that even mean? You know, um uh okay well look we we have fibonacci studies that give us the ranges that when applied to bitcoin translate to 95k to 120k sure fine all right i mean 100k is a psychological barrier uh that's where i think we head are people going to front run it and sell before that probably but i still think we tap 10 100 100 k bitcoin probably have a throw over make everyone believe and go leverage long and then they dump it, maybe pull it back to 80 K and, and then go higher. That's what I think. So um, anyway, this is, you know, so Bitcoin's uh, strong support around 60 K, blah, blah, blah. That's not going to go down that rabbit hole. 2024 election. We skim through this and I should play a much deeper correction. All right. If the expected volatility flails, <laughs> flails, having a hard time with the, uh, Trying to keep it going fast, but stumbling on the words a bit. If the expected volatility fails, it's kind of tricky there. Volatility fails to materialize. It may indicate a more substantial issue at play. Uh, if the expected volatility fails, well, that could go either way. Uh, substantial issue play, much deeper correction for Bitcoin in the lower time frames in terms of the options market. You know, we have to remember there's a lot of derivatives at play too. Um, uh, apathy to price movements often reflects a more bearish sentiment than strong put buying. No idea how to unpack that one. Uh, let's see. Um, I'm going to say, uh, let's not worry about that because the charts show me the charts. I'll tell you the news and the charts say we go higher here. You guys, I'm just, I, I mean, I'm just going to put my plant, my flag and not him and her and say, maybe this, maybe that. Um, I think we're pushing higher here and um, we just need some big shorts to get out of the way. Let's see the October rally, the Trump pump correlated with rising election odds. We covered that. Let's see. However, the so-called Trump trade could come to the end for the Bitcoin after the election. So this is also certainly true. Y you know, the Trump trade, um, I know some of you are cringing when I, when you know, I say that, but um, it's could be a very much a sell the news event. Let's go back to the chart, and I would say that certainly we would have, uh, let's see. Okay, well, look, TradingView keeps uh, choosing my videos for editor's picks, and they sent me $100. And yeah, cool. So I'm going to be doing more videos over on TradingView. Nice guys over there. Uh, good to know. Cool. Um, $100 beats a sharp stick in the eye. Uh, and so where was I going with that? I uh, totally lost my train of thought. Um, no. So so to push higher here and struggle up at this range, you, you know, I would suggest take some profits up in here around 73K. And probably the smart move would be to get out. And wait for, we'll talk about specifically tomorrow in the M3 class on, but we know how this pattern usually plays out on a break to new all time high. It generally doesn't keep going, right? So we're going to see a certain pattern play out and uh, we're going to want to wait for that to play out. That's my recommendation there. Uh, so with that out of the way, 
And the base case only the only pertains to Bitcoin as far as the pre-election speculation is concerned. So that's interesting. So altcoins not likely to rally yet, according to this. Um, but I do, as I said at the beginning of class, I think that Bitcoin and Solana lead and then the altcoins uh, don't. And so here saying altcoin market set for more downside, not nothing. No, the fundamentals haven't changed in the altcoins. Just money is going to do better invested in Bitcoin, Bitcoin rocket ship and Solana kind of trailing behind it. Uh, ETH is sort of like not, not, you know, ultimately ETH may run, but I think it's uh, Bitcoin Sol that leads. Uh, let's see, during certain Bitcoin. Yeah, so the altcoin market may experience further declines. I've been selling altcoins over the last week and de-risking there primarily due to the apathy of speculators. That's the thing. You know, a lot of people are still dumping their money in meme coins. People are asking me, which meme coins are you invested in? Uh, only one, the best one, of course, Brett token, naturally. Something about the name, I just I just gravitate toward that. But uh, but no, I, in all seriousness, I, I think I think Brett, coin, Brett token, of course, these have zero utility, but it's on base chain, Coinbase's um, blockchain. They're going to support that. And as the uh, leading, um, the, sort of the mascot, you know, it's not an official pick, but I think they'll support it. And so I have some of that could go to zero, could 10 X, who knows? Um, but, but I don't have a lot in that and don't recommend that you do either. So the point I was trying to make is the apathy of speculators of, of altcoins. Also, people are trying to get rich in the meme coin market, model the money flow, uh, flow, flew, uh, I flew into, I, I, I'm grasping at the right, we're flown into, I don't know, I moved into, Sorry, guys, I'm just back from vacation. Uh, the brain's not working fully. The, a lot of the money that would have gone into altcoins went into meme coins looking for that big win. And of course, there's so many of them. There's really not much happening there. This disinterest among investors suggests that upward momentum in altcoins is unlikely without significant catalysts. Yeah, for, for now, later, maybe. Altcoin season, as I was about to say, while analyst, analysts are widely expecting an altcoin season, when does that happen? It happens once Bitcoin dominance really gets above 60%, which is where it's at, and up in the 70% range and starts to retrace. Uh, we'll cover that more tomorrow on M3 Active Trader class. And of course, Thursday's Retire Rich class, Mike and I unpack that together. He's excellent. And we'll get into some more news. So uh, make sure to find out more about that if you're not already. Um, and so and even if you just join uh, both of these classes for three months, you will be well rewarded. I promise you. Uh, the potential returns could be weaker the cycle compared to historical altcoin rallies. You know, yeah, if you're buying up lots of cheap altcoins that did well last cycle, I, I hate to tell you, I don't think that many of these aren't coming back. You know, Uniswap comes to mind and, um, you know, Cardano comes to mind. Uh, they're just not in the, they're not in the, the hot narrative. You know, we very much have outlined the five hot narrative narratives and industries in our retire rich classes uh, that's on thursdays if you'd like to learn more about that go over to uh, moonstream.io and click on retire rich inner circle it'll take you to a page that looks like this you can watch a video and you can watch a highlight reel you can see our biggest winning trades so far we've had many in here like um, filecoin that went up 260 percent in 162 days that was last october almost a year ago Render went up 282% in 100 days, 108. Uh, INJ went up 568%, and that was all 159 days. So 5K could have turned into 28K, 28,400. There's a dozen and a half of these that I haven't had time to outline, uh, but that is our Retire Rich class, which is more of a longer-term hold versus the M3 Active Trader, where we're doing swing trading recommendations almost on a daily basis using the indicators that we're talking about today. Um, so not to confuse everybody, there's something for everybody. If you're new to Moonstream, you can get our blockchain bottom line course uh, or sign up for our newsletter, which uh, Mike puts out once a month with a coin pick and traditionally has done very, very well over time. Our trading signals, what I'm going to talk about next, I am going to do a little more training. Uh, guys, if you're using the Crypto Mastery Indicators, uh, please ask questions if you have any questions on how to use them. And if you're not, get them, then ask questions. 
okay? Active Trader, uh, where I'm giving you coin picks, you know, giving updates every day, coin picks on a regular basis in the chat. Retire Rich is more long-term holds, buying the future Netflix, the future Amazons. And if any of you would like to work with me one-on-one, -on -one, I have a few openings. On occasion, people, after a year or so, they say, hey, I got it. I don't need you anymore, uh, which is my goal. So you don't need me anymore. Uh, you can book a uh, call with them. We can just figure out which uh, of these services might be best for you or one-on-one. -on -one. Working one-on-one, -on -one, I build a customized portfolio for you and with you for maximizing the bull run. And we do coaching calls every two weeks, one-on-one, -on -one, if that's of interest. Uh, the Crypto Summit is, is is last year. So if you missed that and you missed out, that was good. But we just hadn't had time to do another one. Uh, let's see, Magazine Bitcoin, Peter Todd is in hiding, by the way. Peter Todd is who they named in that, net, uh, not Netflix, HBO special of uh, where the Bitcoin is money. And, um, well, that's interesting. The Trump, the payouts, the poly market payouts said to be delayed. I think that part of this is worth noting because of the uncertainty that um, it can bring. And so I think what I would say, just all news aside, let me jump over to this. Whatever happens today in the next few days, uh, there's an, you know, the term fade to the market means go against what the market just did. If we get a big, massive pump up into this range in the next day, it likely pulls back for a few days and zigzags, okay? So you could make some quick profits on that pump, but I would uh, probably pulls back and this thing has to settle out for a bit. All right. And I think we've talked about everything we want to here. I'm going to jump back in and do some, um, we can look at some hot coins. We can, uh, if you want me to look at some coins, we can do that and, also do training at the same time on the indicators. Uh, well, actually, so so this is what we want to talk about. Um, yeah, so there's a, there's a couple shorts out there. One was very vocal saying that we would go back to 44K. Uh, why? Uh, traditionally, Bitcoin has revisited the opening price of the year at least once this year it hasn't. So we opened at 44K and, and you can go back and check that. Uh, but that um, uh, that uh, trader flip-flopped and said the bulls are too strong, but he's gone back in and said, no, I'm short again. And there's a well-known trader out of Asia, Crypto Ken, who apparently has a $3 million short on Bitcoin. But he even said it, but he's like, but I'll, I'll admit I'm wrong if we go over 80 or something like that. So, you know, uh, I, I don't see that happening. This person saying the fair value, Bitcoin may never fall below 60K, says an economist. Y you know, um, it's that old saying, those of you that are older remember, I forget which president it was, it might have been Nixon, where he asked uh, his economists uh, to, to what was going to happen. And the one economist said, well, you know, the, this, this could happen. And then the other economist said, well, on the other hand, this could happen. And Nixon or whoever it was says, what I need is a good one-handed economist, right? Just give me an answer. <laughs> um, you, you know, analysis paralysis doesn't help anybody. All right, I'm skimming the right side. Let's see, Bitcoin price, uh, election days, okay, 60K recovering. Uh, I mean, if we go down to 60K again, I would I would also agree that could hold. That was on my uh, chart of um, uh, where there are buy orders. Uh, Bitfinex analysts predict a Bitcoin rally to 80K before the end of 2024, certainly possible. Uh, let's see, but why? Driven by the options market structure, that's interesting, and the prospect of a Republican... Well, but I, I'm more interested in the, the options market structure. Uh, well, hey, look, uh, Kramer says markets predict a Harris win and Kramer is batting zero usually. So uh, that's not <laughs> those of you who know, you know, let's see. Bitcoin's floor price cross 40K Adam back or is that Adam Beck? Uh, I thought it was Adam Beck, but maybe his name is Adam Beck, co-founder of CEO of Blockstream. Um, you, you know, he, he's the other possible Satoshi. And um, I think it's Peter Todd. I think they were right. Who knows? Some metrics suggest that for floor price, I, I think 200 meters up only price 40K. You can view it roughly Bitcoin floor price. Um, this is too much to get into, guys. 
uh, there's too much to digest to have any. It's it's a fugazi. Like, what are we going to do with all this information? Uh, I'm going to stick with the charts, what the charts are telling me. And that is Bitcoin go up. All right. Uh, let's see. Let's open this up and see. And if you guys have any questions here, what do you guys think? I mean, we're in an upward trending parallel channel has yet to be broken. And, um, you know, um, in, in, well, what I want to call your attention to is we have just broken the downward trending parallel channel. Some are calling it a bull flag. Bull flags don't last that long generally, but okay. If we look at it on a weekly time frame, and uh, let me move this out of the way. But as of now, we have an all green radar. One of our signals, by the way, after the 2021 crash, we created this specifically to know, is it safe to go in the water? If it's all red, that means there's sharks in the water. You're going to get eaten. Don't buy anything when it's all red on the radar. All green, green is go. And these, uh, these you can edit these. If you're a day trader, you can go under settings. And uh, again, you can find these at cryptomastery.org slash pro. And uh, if you want to change the inputs on these uh, for different time frames, you can do that right in here. If you're day trading, you can use one minute, three minute, five minute, 15 minute hour. All, all you can change that all up. Uh, I wouldn't mess with these other options here, uh, but this just shows you there's a bunch of stuff going on in here. This is not kid stuff. Joe is a quant engineer, professional trader. He currently builds automated trading systems on the S&P futures. Automated, a lot of cool stuff there. Uh, he he dabbles in these things with us. Uh, great guy. Uh, so he's a trader, a quant engineer, and a programmer. Very rare to get those three together. We're very lucky to have those. Don't look at these and say those are cute, minor, more advanced. Sorry, no, they're not better. I've looked at everything. Uh, I've traded the, uh, the what is it, the crypto faces. Um, too confusing. Um, <clears throat> Market cipher didn't don't like it at all, uh, and everything else. I certainly use these things in conjunction. The best I've ever used, and not to sound self serving, but I saw these, and said I want to work with that guy. And serendipity brought us together. I'm not saying these are the best because we created them. I'm saying these are the best because I went and found them, and I love the simplicity of these uh sorry guys a bit all over the place where are yeah so that's cryptomastery.org slash pro there's a video you can get a deeper training on that uh, if you don't have these go watch this at least go watch this but then i would buy them and because one bad trade you know uh, so basically, again, what we are seeing is we have a new uptrending channel i always like to identify these as early as possible and so basically, but we can come on now. It's a click and drag. All right. I'm a little bit rusty. Been uh, down in Florida for about 10 days. Highly recommend that to recharge. And uh, so do you see this, you guys, that we have now in this circle. Break or break. We've broken and retested. We are in a new upward trend channel. Be happy. Don't worry. Be happy. We are in it. We've retested. We're in a new upward trend channel. This is a buy zone. I was saying that. And one of our members last night said my buy limit order just got filled right around 67K. Nailed it. Nailed it. So I think we go higher. We zigzag a bit, but I think we go higher here. Okay. Chats are filling up. What do we have here? Uh, Bhutan covered that. Um, Bhutan Pro. Uh, the Trend Pro. Yes, Perry was updated yesterday. Do I have to do anything special regarding that in my trading view? Um, I just covered that, um, Perry, but I'll do it again for you guys. So yes, we do update these indicators from time to time. And uh, let's take a look at that. So I have, I'm going to do it. So let's do it together. Uh, let's see uh, the hash ribbon indicator, by the way, the hash ribbon indicator said buy back here also in line with ours. So we've been in buy mode. You know, I mentioned that in a prior class. Let's get rid of that. So the trend indicator is what you're referring to. And, um, this just a quick, um, analogy for everybody. This is a, a longer term buy signal. It's kind of like Mario brothers is going to come and grab all the coins. A key signifies a new trend may be forming see the red line this indicates no trend and then we get a key saying okay we might be have a new trend forming a bullish trend and then the bell is the buy signal 
So we've coded that vertically as a green line. So you don't even have to look at this indicator. And then the number sequence tells you where to take profits, partial profits on the fifth uh, signal. And then the seventh is the bag of money and then wait for a new key bell sequence and take profits along the way. And then you wait for a new trend. Um, so this has been, this is a phenomenal indicator that shows follow through and is great once the bull run really kicks off. Question was, uh, we sent out an indication that this has been updated. So what I'm going to do, right, is I'm going to delete this out of the chart. I'm going to save the chart up here. I call it my CM Pro layout because you can have different layouts, which is the great thing about TradingView. Uh, great platform these guys have built. Uh, good job, you guys. And a big, big fan of TradingView um, compared to what we had 20 years ago. My God. Uh, 25 years ago, I was trading on a, it was a green screen. E-Trade was a green screen and a flashing cursor. It was like DOS. Uh, so we've come a long way from Telescan and uh, Mac, uh, the Macintosh. All right, I digress. So we're going to go in and add this in to here. I'm going to go to my invite-only scripts, and I'm going to come back to the uh, Trend Pro, and I'm going to double-click on it. Now it's been reloaded. I loaded it twice somehow. Now, what are the, uh, what's changed is he said he made some changes to the alerts. Okay, yeah. So, so these have been improved. If you want to have an alert fire when we get one of these, when we get a bell essentially showing um, the, um, sorry guys, I have to turn my AC off. I'm freezing over here. Okay, uh, it's so cool you can do that by uh, by phone, by the way. Uh, we're so lazy in, in these days. Anyway, I want, I'm not to bore you guys. So basically, if we want to have an alert, next time we have a bell, you can do that on the red signal on this when it turns to a, basically, it's not necessarily a cell, but it's kind of like I would be getting out. Um, let me confirm that because the bell is here. Green up, red down. I, I need. I'm. I'm talking to Joe later today. Let me get back to you on that. Okay. Um, sometimes these changes are so new that I don't have. I don't know what they mean. Okay. So. Uh. Yeah. So. So let let me find out. It materially, it hasn't changed, but that's how you would reload it, the new indicators. And that's the thing when you buy the indicators, you get all future upgrades during your term. That's why the lifetime makes sense, you guys. I'm telling you, these have saved me and made me way more than anything else. Uh, not to be self-serving, you know, I, I would I would highly recommend you go buy those. Uh, my thoughts on, let's see, Betenser will get to Trend Pro got it. So Sol not considered an altcoin. I mean, it is still an alt. It's, it's, I mean, ETH is still an altcoin. Anything but Bitcoin is an altcoin. So um, Sol however is a is a layer one has its own blockchain okay same with link same with compound um but sol is strongest i think look at this nice uh, zigzag which i drew back in this range followed through uh we've got more zigging and zagging i'm gonna sell solana at a, at uh, 195 and 200 for no other reason there's a big sell block there i'm not going to question these sell blocks anymore and this is one of our other indicators you know, these are <clears throat> these are actual orders on the Coinbase. And invariably, this is how I doubled, nearly doubled my Solana in my IRA. I bought down in the green range. I sold up here in the top when it got to overbought. Bought here, sold here, bought here, sold here. But I got very lucky when it was that Sunday when the markets were bleeding off and I had a feeling we would drop and overreact on that Monday right here. Let me open that up for you guys if you're new. One of the best trades of the year. If you guys are new, one of the best way to make money in the markets is set limit buy orders and whether a capitulation might have. That's when people are just selling like crazy. And I can't remember what this was. Was this this was the yen carry trade when markets were dumping? And right here was Sunday. Markets had already dropped considerably. I was like, Monday's gonna be blood red. I put buy limit orders in at 125, 120, 115, and 110. And I got filled on all of those. I don't remember if 110 got filled, but I got filled on all these and it bounced hard. I woke up in profits and rode it all the way up into here. You know, they say the golf, you know, when you get one hole in one or something that you're hooked for life, that's the hole in one in golf, in trading rather. When you And how did I know to set my buy limit orders there? 
because we could see using our order block detector where the heaviest buy orders were on the exchange. Guys, we have made this as simple as possible. Trading is not easy, but it can be simple if you just follow the signals. And we've got seven of them uh, that we use. Another one I haven't talked about yet is our version of the Bollinger Band. Um, guys, uh, the regular Bollinger Bands are broken. They're wrong. They use the wrong settings. We have modified the settings on ours. So you can see when it came right up to here to this upper Bollinger Band and then it sold off, sold off here. And, and whenever it touches the lower green Bollinger Band, another reason this was a great trade, pushed up higher from there. So we have access to that. We have the dynamic average true range, which is also useful to overlay in. We have the radar, which I shared with you, and, uh, and the rocket. I haven't shown you guys the rocket yet because I haven't seen one lately. Uh, our screener, our M3 screener, is showing only things that are bullish here, our Bitcoin and Sol on the RSI. At a glance, wouldn't touch anything else. Bitcoin Sol, there you go. You get a screener, you can modify which coins are in there. And pretty much you don't want to buy though unless you see RSI and signal green. That is, these are, it's an easy way to look at uh, the RSI Pro and these two, okay? So if I go to Solana, we have a green RSI, which means there it's green and above 50. 50 is the barometer for bullishness. Mostly I love this indicator for the divergences because those signify inflection points. But if I'm in a trade, I want to know that at least ideally my RSI is red. I'm sorry, green. So we're looking at Solana right here. The uh, The signal line is red though. I like both of them in green. Again, confluence, you guys. This is all a game of reducing your risk. And so what I'm looking for here is the TSI to go up. Do we have our, uh, we don't, we do have an ERI. Our early reversal indicator is green, hence the name ERI. Do I buy it now just based on that? Normally I wouldn't. I'm going to buy some Sol as soon as this class is over. Why? Bullish engulfing candle. Now I'm not going to go all in. This is where we want to wait till the end of the day. Because what can happen is if we see a sharp sell-off toward the end of the day, let's say the election polls open and something's wrong. Um, anything could go wrong and or spook the market. And uh, this could turn red. It could turn red. The ERI goes away. That could still happen. That's why you want to base it on the daily close and weekly closes. So I actually, I'm going to take that back. As, as much as I'm itching to get in and buy some more Sol, I might buy a little, but I want to see at least two of my indicators green. Either that ERI TSI. Now the TSI is getting really close though. When that's green above 20, that's my entry. Okay, and uh, you know if you're new to seeing this, look, it's not that hard. It's not rocket science. I'm going to say I want to buy. I want to know when this crosses up above 20, and that would be um, the new version of that is actually the um, uh, the green. So I guess I could do that. I'm going to do it as green. That will be when it turns above 20. Okay. So you can also do it based on the level to above 20. So, but that's basically it. ERI, TSI, I'm in. And I'm adding to that trade. Uh, signal line goes green. I'm adding DCA, dollar cross averaging, RSI, uh, bullish divergence. I'm in again, that's it. And if, if we happen to get um, a green line here, a green line is our trend indicator. But typically our the four horsemen, which is when I'm, I'm all in on a trade is ERI, TSI, signal, and uh, RSI, okay? Early reversal indicator, trend strength indicator, relative strength indicator, all different math. You guys might say, why don't you just have one? We're, we were working on one, actually. That'll be for a uh, an auto trader. We're working on that. We're getting, we're, all, we're really almost we're pretty close on that, you guys. For now though, uh, that's what I'll, I'll be looking for. So let's see, uh, my thoughts on, um, Bit tensor, you know, I think my thoughts are it's 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 just never excited me. Um, you know, it's kind of expensive, and, and yeah, Tau, it's it's not easy to buy in the U.S. Um, but I'm happy to look at a chart for you. Let me turn off the screener here and and um hide that. Uh, but basically, I don't like this chart. So the analogy I've used over and over again, and let me hide the uh, rocket for us. It is above the ice or below the ice. 
And if you're above the ice, you're fine. When you go out walking on the lake, you want to go play hockey or go ice skating on the lake. Do you want to be on thin ice? You know, do you want to look through and see the fish swimming around and it's crystal clear? No, right? You want to be on the thick ice. And, and sometimes you get that thin layer of ice on the thicker ice, right? So that's even better. So in this case, um, and I'll just turn off our, I'll leave the ERI on rather. The best scenario is when you're like on above both. The 21 day or the 21 period exponential moving average is the thin ice. And uh, we're going a bit long, you guys. I got to wrap this up. The the 50 period is the thick ice. And so that gives us our, you know, strength and courage and conviction and d -rex to boom, push up, push up. All good, all good. Uh-oh, fell below the ice here. We're drowning, we're drowning. Uh, but holding on the thick ice, but then boom, got below it. Try to get it, but usually you'll see a one last attempt, you know, drown, not to talk about drowning victim, but, but, but it's kind of the analogy trying to get ahead above water, but no, now below here, you're drowning, you're drowning, you're drowning. Boom. So anytime it's below the 21 to 50 period EMA, uh, I don't like it. And it's more than likely to reject and reject and reject. Now, um, it's oversold. It does have bullish divergence. It does have a bullish ERI. If you're in the trade, fine, a bullish engulfing candle. But I would personally put an alert right there, right above. Um, I, I wouldn't want to touch it until it's back up above the ice. So let's say 516, 515. That's where I'd want to pay attention because below here, it's too easy to reject and head lower. Okay, that's all we have time for you guys. Let's see, Dr. T, has anyone noticed what happens if Trump wins and the VP has to certify the win? Wait, what? Has anyone noticed what happens if Trump wins and the VP usually has to certify the win? Guess who the VP is? Uh, you mean the current VP? Oh, you mean Kamala? Well, that's interesting. Um, yeah, it's the first, it's kind of been a while since we've had a VP running for, for P. Uh, yeah, I don't know. That's above my pay grade, you guys. I mean, I just expect some uncertainty regarding the order buy and sell blocks when you were saying you were going to respect those for making decisions. Which time frame is best for us to play at the, the daily, Paul? Uh, the daily and weekly. I mean, let's look at, uh, let me go back to the Bitcoin. Um, and, and certainly tomorrow, you guys will be looking deeper. We're going at the total market cap. We'll be looking at the DXY. We'll be looking at our watch list and coins. Holy smokes, you guys. Holy smokes. OGN up 18%. Bada bing. But on the chart, not that exciting. We'll dive in all that tomorrow. Let's look at Bitcoin here. Uh, and then we got to wrap up because this class is too long. It takes too long for the recording to uh, to um, sort of uh, what's going on over here. I got some, something falling on my green screen. <laughs> uh, the what are we talking about? The um, anyway, Bitcoin looks good here. I would say I might buy some Bitcoin here, to be honest, for the pump. And then then I would sell up in this range. Um, we talked about the time frame. You said uh, which is best. I will look at daily primarily and we'll look at weekly sometimes. They should align. But look at the strong buy support down around between 49K, 50K, 55K on Bitcoin. That's why I don't think this thing goes lower. The 44K um, people... The 20k people, good luck. Here, the, the other reason, and I had already closed it, but the uh, hash ribbon indicator typically means when it fires blue, that price never gets below that again. Now, it did, it did on the prior cycle because we had um, some it, it, for whatever reason, but for them in most part, that's another signal why it, well, it shouldn't go back below prior highs. Uh, anything can happen, but I think the shorts are wrong and they're going to get squeezed. So back to the daily, uh, which is what we have here. Sometimes I'll go to a two day just to eliminate some noise. But when looking at order blocks specifically, hang on, let me just double check something. Um, yeah, the only thing that's ominous here a little bit is our TSI on the two day is just is heading down and dangerously close to breaking that 80. But uh, that is, you know, again, if we, but, but on the daily, which is what I usually look at, and then the weekly on the TSI, a bit overbought, but still green on the radar. So, you know, look, I think um, I'm bullish. 
for the near term, I think I think if we this is a good take profit zone up around 73k Bitcoin because probably it'll zigzag. And I would rather be out and wait and buy the next zigzag or at least have some powder dry in, in case it does come back down. But um anyway, point made. And uh Perry's saying, yeah, this is not rocket science, although the rocket indicator could be um a rocket indicator for those of you who are new. Um, is a pattern that I noticed years ago, finally coded it, and has a high correlation of uh, going much higher. Let me see if it's on. Usually, I thought it was ETH has good uh, rockets. ETH or SOL. Uh, let's clean up this chart here. It's not that common, but we can set alerts on these, which is great. And uh, let's see. It's really, that's right. It's not ETH. It's more like SOL. And in the past for the rocket, I believe. Yeah, look at these rockets on Solana. Uh, back in here, nice little rocket here, shoots up in the sky. Another rocket here, shoots up in the sky. Does it always work? Does not always work, but we're still tweaking the indicator. The key differentiator on the rocket is it needs to close at or near the high. So this rocket is not textbook. It's, um, I might need to tweak the code a bit. This is because it sits on the 21-day exponential moving average, can be on the 50. The tail down below, the launch pad is the 21-day EMA, and it has to close closer to the top within 5%. So you don't want to see too much of a tail. You want it closing near the top. And the analogy is just like a good old, a bottle rocket or you know the old rockets you do when you're in the Boy Scouts. You light this fuse, it shoots up in the sky, and then it falls back to earth. And here's another one. Shoots up in the sky, falls back to earth. So um, Solana, let's do that. I'm going to set an alert on the rocket indicator. Now, what you might not realize is you can do this once per bar close. If you do it only once, it'll fire one time. And then it, may, it won't fire the next time unless you reset the alert. Since Solana has such a good history with this, I'm going to choose once per bar close. And then um, uh, make sure you set this down here. So... I'm just going to say rocket. I don't need pattern detected. Rocket on rocket on Sol at close. And I'm going to say buy that mofo because uh, we know uh, coins have their own personalities. Um, do I, I want to know when the next time Sol has a rocket. And, um, you know, these are, but you want to visually confirm them. The problem with this rocket is, and I, I think we do need to tweak the code a bit. The tail, the fuse should be lower. Now, what does that mean psychologically wise? The reason I love this signal is it means that, um, you know, it opened on a support level and it's, let me go down to an ideal one and it's sold off, the, the sellers sold it off and then the buyers came in and were saying, no, no, you don't. Like here's a kind of a textbook one. So it opened here, sold off down to theirs. So it was a red candle at one point, but the bulls pushed it up to close near the highs. That's why. That's what it means. And, you know, this this is kind of a rocket here, but it closed just a little bit below. That would have been more than 10% off the high. And uh, But I, I like this rocket sitting right on that 50-day EMA. And, you know, this one triggered it. It's not an exact... Well, anyway, it's it's kind of an exact pattern. The programming of this thing is a little bit... Uh, needs a little tweaking. We programmed it in... Uh, a version of chat GPT. So I need Joe to maybe fix that, but pretty, it's pretty good. You know, it's good enough. So we'll be watching for that on. So, all right, you guys, I could go all day. I think uh, it's mostly, uh, I would say um, things look good to me. I'd probably be careful here. I might buy some Bitcoin and Sol, but have some powder dry in case we pull back a little bit more. Um, what is it? Uh, you would think BCH would follow Bitcoin closer. Bitcoin cash just no. I mean, it's not because, yeah, it's just, it's not Bitcoin. I mean, it's a copy. And um, <clears throat> so nothing against it, but all of those that, that forked, I, you know what? I wonder what Litecoin's up to, by the way. Just my spidey sense, you know, you guys know, my spidey sense sometimes pops into my head. Uh, Litecoin hasn't been doing very well here, but what does it say? It, it is oversold. And I think we should keep an eye on Litecoin just because... I, uh, this oversold down here, when that turns green and the RSI is green, we have bullish divergence. And, uh, so you guys in M3 might be seeing a Litecoin pick, but I don't like all that sell pressure up ahead. 
And so, you know, that would be a swing trade into that region, potentially. But um, let me just add it to the uh, chart. We haven't watched Litecoin in a while. And uh, we haven't looked at the speculative degen. We'll look at, so tomorrow we'll look at our speculative degen list. We'll look at our AI coins. And we'll look at our D-pin micro caps uh, and our gaming coins. On Thursday, we'll look at our inner circle watch lists. And uh, of course, our M3 Active Trader watch list. So while we're on this subject, let me move up Litecoin. I just, I haven't talked about Litecoin in a while. I think it's probably one to keep an eye on, an eye on. So, all right, guys, uh, Perry, look, let's let's talk about that in M3 tomorrow. Um, you know, I'm not, I'm out of time. These recordings get too long and then they become a bit honorary. Uh, but seeing lots of green, I like that. Uh, green is good, uh, certainly after all this sell pressure. Let's see what happens tonight. Uh, no matter who, uh, you know, your wins, your candidate, um, just hopefully it's civil and and everything can get on with their lives, get on with their business and, and the business of trading. So with that, everybody, take care and uh, we'll see you next week. All right, cheers, everyone. Bye.